Hello and welcome to our channel. The lesson you are going to watch today is on one of the most important areas in English grammar, the subject verb agreement. We will explore some of the tricky areas and the difficulties that students generally face in subject verb agreement with ample number of examples to illustrate each point. First, let's discuss the basic principle behind subject verb agreement. Well, subject verb agreement implies that the subject and the verb of a sentence must always agree for the sentence to be grammatically correct. That means a singular subject is always followed by the singular form of the verb and a plural subject is always followed by the plural form of the verb. As an example, notice the subjects and verbs in the following sentences. Ria likes chocolates and a hen lays eggs. The subject nouns are singular, meaning they stand for a single person, animal or thing and you would have observed that the verbs likes and lays in these two sentences end in s. Now some examples with plural subjects, meaning those nouns are pronounced which stand for more than one person or thing. The athletes run for one hour daily and these dogs bark at any stranger. We have the plural subjects athletes and dogs in these sentences and as you can observe the verbs run and bark used for these plural subjects do not end with s. So subject verb agreement rules say that to form the plural of a verb in the present tense one should remove the s or sometimes es or ies from its singular form. Here are some examples of verbs in their present tense singular and plural form. You can see that eats is the singular form of the verb and eat without an s is the plural form. Runs is the singular form of the verb and run without an s is the plural form. Now here is one word of caution. These are the general rules for third person singular and third person plural pronouns and nouns and so they won't apply to first and second person pronoun subjects. In case you are finding it difficult to understand me, we introduce this concept of subjects and person in our lesson on parts of speech and I recommend that you revise the grammar basics covered in that lesson before you study this lesson further. We were talking about exceptions. There are some exceptions in the verb form for first and second person pronouns. For instance, I play basketball and we play basketball. The verb form is play for both the singular subject I and the plural subject we. Similarly, you play basketball. The second person pronoun remains you for both singular and plural number and so does the verb form. The verb form is play for both. There is one more tricky bit here. The verb to be, whether as a main verb or as an auxiliary verb, follows a different rule when it comes to subject verb agreement. The irregular verb forms of to be are very commonly misused. The verb to be takes different forms depending on the subject person and number. Where there is a singular subject, the correct use of to be is either is, am, are, were or was. For a plural subject, the correct use of to be is either are or were. Anybody who has studied English as a formal language in school is comfortable with these verb forms. So let's skip the examples and move on to the more meaty portion, that is tricky areas in subject verb agreement error. So that you may form an effective mind map of the subject verb agreement error, we can categorize it into the following areas, which we will cover in the same order as shown here. The very first problem area is confusing singular and plural nouns. To give you an idea of the difficulty involved, here is a short exercise you might attempt. Please pause the video if you want to attempt them at your own comfortable pace. In the given sentences, pick the correct underlined word from the options. 
Okay, so now let's discuss. For most nouns, it's easy to identify which one is singular and which one plural. In common nouns like boy, mango, tree, building, doctor, etc., we append an S or an ES at the end of the word to form the plural noun. But there are a few things that can't be subjected to a physical count at all. They are known as uncountable nouns. In particular, the material nouns like milk, honey, ice, cold, wood, etc. can't be counted. They are uncountable nouns. Even abstract nouns that stand for qualities, state of mind, stage of life, etc. such as bravery, honesty, happiness, childhood are uncountable. One very important tip here, material and abstract nouns and other uncountable nouns are considered singular. When you use such uncountable nouns as subjects, they will take singular verbs. For instance, honesty is the best policy and milk is good for health. Here is a list of some other common uncountable nouns in English. Here, advice, scenery, luggage, bread, furniture, poetry, machinery, offspring, information, business, land, etc. are all uncountable nouns and singular. One important point that you must remember is that you can't even append an S to them to make a plural out of them. If you encounter such words like advices, sceneries, luggages, breads, furnitures, etc. Do remember that they are all wrong and do not exist at all. So try out the rest two sentences. And as you already know, the correct verb form for these subjects is singular. His hair has turned grey now. And my luggage is lying at the bus stand. Here are some other tricky cases. The following are nouns that look like they are plural but are always used as singular. Names of subjects such as maths, physics, electronics. But gymnastics is plural. Names of common diseases such as mumps, measles, rickets, staggers, gripes. Names of some games such as billiards and drafts. And also the word news, innings, ethics, media and data are all singular. The correct answers for this exercise on the right are Mathematics is my favorite subject. Generally, measles lasts about two weeks. The news is not true. Media is a mixed blessing. Is and last are the correct singular verbs for these singular nouns. Then there are nouns which are always plural. Watch out for those words here that we think of as a single item or a single unit. There are some patterns that you can keep in mind, but for the rest, just try to memorize. Names of instruments having two parts, such as scissors, tongs, spectacles, fetters, etc. are plural. Certain articles of dress that are worn below the belt, such as trousers, jeans, shorts, pajamas, pants, etc. are plural. Parts of the body such as bowels, intestines, etc. are also plural. So are certain other nouns such as annals, thanks, dregs, wages, credentials, outskirts, earnings, etc. The answers to this exercise are Beware, scissors are sharp. My trousers are woolen and human intestines are a long continuous tube running from the stomach all the way down. And some nouns can be singular or plural. Their spelling remains the same. Nouns such as swine, sheep, deer, cod, salmon, aircraft, spacecraft, 
series species could be singular or plural with the same spelling one important thing here words like aircraft can refer to a single plane or more than one using aircrafts for a plural sense is totally wrong the sentence the aircraft is taking off on the runway and the aircraft are taking off on the runway both are possible depending on whether you're talking about one plane or more than one next one is again important some nouns ending in ics such as athletics statistics and politics are considered singular when referring to an organized body of knowledge and plural when referring to individual facts or qualities so we say statistics is offered every year in this college because statistics is referring to a subject an organized body of knowledge here but we would say that the statistics indicate that crime is decreasing in this city statistics is referring to the individual graphs or numbers etc that are being used to indicate that crime is decreasing in a particular city the second area which can create confusions in subject verb agreement is the other words and phrases that come in between the subject and its verb these additional words that come in between the subject and its verb could be prepositional phrases phrases such as of the car at the old house about him over that big hill are all examples of prepositional phrases because they start with a preposition to get a better idea try out the exercise on your right pause the video if you wish to try them at your own pace now let's discuss look at the first sentence the car with many riders dash speeding around the curve was a verb one might get confused deciding the subject is the subject car or is it riders one very important tip for such question is mentally cross out the interrupting prepositional phrases so that you can identify the subject the car is the true subject in this sentence with many riders is just a prepositional phrase where riders is the object of the preposition with crossing out this phrase we get the car was speeding around the curve so was is the correct verb for this sentence the box of nestle's chocolates dash found missing from my cupboard is the subject box or chocolates cross out the extra words and you get the box was found missing from my cupboard was is the correct verb the arrival of the internet and email makes communication with family so much easier is the correct subject arrival which is singular or internet and email which is plural again cancel out the extra words and you would see that the subject is arrival singular verb form is required here so makes is the correct word the colors in this bed sheet look beautiful the true subject is colors which is clearly plural so the correct verb is look sometimes there could be relative clauses that come between the subject and the verb it's easy to identify these clauses as they are introduced by a relative pronoun such as who which or that the same trick works here as well you mentally cross out the intervening clause so that you can identify the subject any verb within that relative clause also has the same subject as the relative pronoun ultimately refers to that noun or noun phrase only that noun or noun phrase is called the pronoun antecedent try out the following sentences the answers are a dog that loves its owners dash a reward deserve or deserves remove the dependent clause introduced by that and you get a dog deserves a reward dog is singular so deserves people who listen to that kind of music are few the restaurant menu which contains several items 
dash as variety. Remove extra words. The restaurant menu allows us variety. Since menu is singular, so the correct verb is allows. The third case is that of tag on expressions. These expressions start with words such as with, together with, including, accompanied by, in addition to, as well as or together with. These are the easiest to identify because they are mostly sandwiched between two commas. Just remove the complete clause sandwiched between the two commas and the true subject gets revealed. If you have tried out the questions, the answers are The team captain dot 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 is anxious about the outcome. Captain is the singular subject, so the correct answer is is. The president dot 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 is traveling to India. The president is the singular subject, so the correct answer is is. These students dot 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 want to go on a field trip. These students is the plural subject, so the correct answer is want. Srinivas Ramanujan dot 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 is popularly known as the man who knew infinity. Srinivas Ramanujan, which is a name, is a singular subject, so the correct answer is is. The third area creating complications is compound subjects. Now what's a compound subject? A compound subject contains two or more simple subjects joined together that share the same verb. The way these subjects are joined determines whether the compound subject takes a singular or a plural verb. If the constituent nouns or pronouns are joined by AND, the compound subject is plural and takes a plural verb. Let's try out a few questions here. Rhea and her friend dash participating in the debate competition. The compound subject is Rhea and her friend, which is plural. We need to pick a plural verb here, so we pick R. Time and tide dash for none. The subject is time and tide, a plural one, so we pick the plural form of the verb wait. Her business acumen and smart personality dash contributed to her successful management career. Two noun phrases, business acumen and smart personality are connected by and. The compound subject is clearly plural, so we use the plural verb have. Carrots, broccoli and spinach are available in plenty during winters. Three simple nouns, carrots, broccoli and spinach are connected by AND, so the compound subject is plural. Same rule applies for the subjects joined by the correlative conjunction pair, both dot 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 AND. Therefore, in the last sentence, both her father and her husband want her to go for higher studies. Want is a required plural form of the verb for the plural subject. Now, there are some exceptions for this rule that you need to watch out for. If the words that make up the subject refer to the same person or thing or to synonymous ideas, the subject is singular. In the first sentence, his best friend and advisor, it's clear that the words best friend and advisor refer to the same person, so the subject is singular. We need the singular verb form which is lives. His best friend and advisor lives in Delhi, whereas he lives in Mumbai. The second sentence is, Cornflakes and milk dash our Sunday breakfast. Well, cornflakes and milk make a single unit of breakfast. You won't eat one without the other. So the subject is singular. The singular verb form is, is correct. Similarly, peace and harmony are synonymous ideas. So the subject is singular. The correct sentence is, Peace and harmony is very important for domestic life. Another exception that you need to keep in mind is, when a compound subject joined by AND is preceded by each or every, a singular verb is used. 
We will come back to the case of each and every in our section on indefinite pronouns. But for now, just remember that the subject is singular even though the words are connected by and. So, for example, every student and teacher has to wear a uniform. Here, we pick the singular verb has for the singular subject. And in the next sentence, in this garden, each tree, shrub and vine needs to be trimmed. We pick the singular verb needs for the singular subject. That was the case when the words are joined by and. Now, the second possibility is that the two or more words of phrases forming the subject are being joined by or. The rule that applies here is, the verb agrees with the subject part nearer to it. Whether the subject comes before or after the verb does not matter. The proximity with the verb determines the number. If the nearer subject is singular, you must choose the singular verb. If plural, you must choose the plural verb form. Let's try out the exercise on the right. In the first sentence, Astha or her sister dash no match for Ruhani in singing. Before the verb, there is a mention of two girls, Astha and Astha's sister. But since they are joined by or, the rule of agreement with the nearer subject applies here. Her sister is the nearer subject, which is singular, so we pick the verb is for this sentence. If we interchange the two subjects, the nearer subject is still singular. So again we would pick is. My books or diary dash kept in the drawer. Here one of the subjects my books is plural and the other which is diary is singular. The nearer subject is diary which is singular so we choose the verb is. If we interchange the two subjects the nearer subject becomes my books which is clearly plural so then we would have to choose the verb are. The same rule applies to subjects joined by other conjunction pairs such as either or, neither nor, not only but also, etc. The verb agrees with the subject part nearer to it. Either the man or his relatives dash the truth of the matter. Nearer subject is his relatives, so we choose the verb no. But the sentence would be either his relatives or the man knows the truth of the matter. Nearer subject is man, so we would choose the verb knows. Neither the twins nor Richa dash good in studies. The correct sentence is neither the twins nor Richa is good in studies. Nearer subject is Richa, singular, so we choose the verb is. But we would say neither Richa nor the twins are good in studies because the nearer subject is the twins which is plural. Not only milk but also eggs dash a good source of proteins in diet. Not only milk but also eggs are a good source of proteins in diet because the nearer subject is eggs. But the sentence would be not only eggs but also milk is a good source of proteins in diet because in this case the nearer subject is milk which is uncountable and hence singular. Now we start with our fourth section which covers the case of special verbs such as the to be verb. Linking verbs such as be, seem, look and appear are followed by a complement and a noun complement should not be confused with a subject. Have a look at the following sentences so that you get an idea of the confusions that might possibly arise. You won't have a confusion deciding the verb for this sentence. An idle mind is the devil's workshop. Both before and after the verb, we have noun phrases which are singular. An idle mind is singular and so is the noun complement, the devil's workshop. The verb has to be singular. Absolutely no confusions in deciding this. But now look at this sentence. The worst pest that can infest one's house and spoil the furniture and fittings is termites. As we have learnt, we need to mentally cancel out the relative clause. Let me assist you in this. The worst pest dot 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 is termites. Sounds weird, isn't it? 
but you would be surprised to know that's the correct verb. The worst pest is termites. The alternative to this, the worst pest are termites is wrong because the subject here is a noun phrase, the worst pest and not the word termites which is a noun complement. However, if we invert the word order, a lot changes. We would say termites are the worst pest that can infest one's house. The verb are are correct in this sentence as the subject for this verb is termites which is plural. Okay, so I guess you would have realized the complications involved. Whenever the verb to be is used as a linking verb, as the main verb of the sentence, you might have confusion deciding whether the subject of this verb is the one that comes before or after, particularly if one of them is singular and the other is plural. So here is a special hint. As always, the subject of the verb comes before such verbs regardless of what follows. You must make the verb agree with the subject stated before the linking verb, not with the noun complement that follows the verb. Let's discuss the answers for the exercise on the right of this video. Ria's favorite dessert dash chocolate muffins. Is the subject dessert or muffins? Well, the subject comes before the verb, so dessert is the subject and is singular, so we pick is as its verb. Her children dash her pride. Is the subject children or pride? Again, the subject comes before the verb, so the phrase her children is the subject and is plural, so we pick are as its verb. The secret of the recipe is the diced onions. The secret is the true subject. As you have learnt, you need to ignore the prepositional phrase of the recipe so that the subject gets revealed. The problem is spiraling costs. The problem is the subject of the verb in question. And the issues dash to globalization. Issues is the true subject, not globalization. Since the subject is plural, we choose the verb relate. But there are some cases where the subject indeed comes after the verb. Just being aware of them would help in identifying the subject. The subject comes after the verb in sentences that ask a question, like the ones given in this exercise. One tip to identify the subject is to change the question into a statement. Dash the books in the library, is or are? The statement looks like the books are in the library. So, we choose the verb are. Dash the employees consent to the terms in the contract. Do or does? Well, the statement or answer to such a question would look like the employees do consent to the terms in the contract. So, we choose the verb do. And the last one is where dash the grumpy dog and his master is or are. The statement would look like the grumpy dog and his master are in the room. So we choose the verb are. The second case where the subject comes after the verb is sentences and clauses that begin with here or there. One tip to help you crack these questions is turn the sentence around. So in the first sentence, here dash some tips to help you with the subject verb agreement error. You rephrase it and you get some tips are here to help you with the subject verb agreement error. The subject is tips which is plural so are is the verb you must choose. All of a sudden here dash the minister and his associates. Concentrate on the clause here come the minister and his associates. Rephrasing it you get the minister and his associates come to that place. The minister and his associates is a plural subject for which we need to decide the verb. The correct verb is come, a plural one. There dash my brand new purse into the drain. Go or goes? Turn the sentence around and you get alas, my brand new purse goes into the drain. The subject phrase is my brand new purse. 
for which the verb has to be goes. The third case of subject after verb is when a prepositional phrase comes before the verb and the subject follows. Turning the sentence around will work here as well. What one would need to keep in mind is that the prepositional phrases can't be subjects. Subject is that noun or noun phrase which is being talked about. Is the doer or beer of a verb. On the wall dash several paintings was a verb. On the wall is clearly a prepositional phrase. You turn the sentence around and you get several paintings were on the wall. Paintings is the subject. So we choose the verb form were. In the center of the museum dash three huge sculptures. What stands in the center of the museum? Three huge sculptures. The plural verb stand agrees with the plural subject three sculptures. Our sixth section on subject verb agreement is that of collective nouns as subjects. Collective nouns are nouns which denote a group or collection of people or things. Words such as audience, committee, police, crew, family, faculty, government, group and team. All are collective nouns. The following are the agreement rules that work in the case of collective nouns. A few collective nouns such as police, people, gentry, cattle, poultry etc. are always considered to be plural and would take plural verbs. For example, she is happy with the way the police have handled the case. These poultry are ready for sale. The cattle are grazing near the canal. The other collective nouns can be singular or plural depending on the context in which they are being used. There are some rules of thumb that you can refer while deciding on the verb number. When the constituent members of the collective noun act as one unit as a single entity, the collective noun is treated as singular and agrees with a singular verb. But if we are referring to individuals within the group, the collective noun is considered plural and agrees with a plural verb. The jury dash about to give dash verdict. Now verdict means the decision on a case and the jury members, regardless of their personal opinions, will give out a single decision. So the jury acts as one single unit here. The sentence should be, the jury is about to give its verdict. But we would say the jury are taking their seats because in this sentence every member will occupy their seats individually. So we need a plural noun. We say the team practices well before every match. Practices because the team acts as one unit during the match practice. But the team are arguing over who should be the captain. Because in case of an argument or a disagreement or even a quarrel between members of a group, the group is not acting as a single unit anymore. A plural verb is required here. The committee has to submit its report by next week. One report gets submitted for the whole committee. So the group acts as one unit. It should be considered singular. But the committee were not in agreement on the action to be taken. Just like the previous example, the verb should be plural here. The seventh section of this lesson is on indefinite pronouns as subjects. An indefinite pronoun is a pronoun that does not refer to a specific person, place or thing. Confusions arise due to the fact that some indefinite pronouns are singular. Some others are plural and a third group of indefinite pronouns could be both singular and plural depending on the context. When these indefinite pronouns are used as the subject, the verb must agree in number with these indefinite pronouns. It's best that you try and memorize this list to be absolutely sure in the area of subject verb agreement. The indefinite pronouns each 
either, neither, much, one and another are always singular. And singular are some other indefinite pronouns that end with body, nobody, anybody, everybody, somebody. Indefinite pronouns that end with one, no one, anyone, everyone, someone. And indefinite pronouns that end with think, nothing, anything, everything, something. Hope this pattern helps in learning this list. Let's apply the concept. Here are some examples. One has reached already. Another is on the way. Neither is eligible for the course. Everyone is required to clear his or her dues. Someone has to be responsible. Nobody knows the trouble I have seen. All the pronouns highlighted in purple were indefinite pronouns acting as subjects. They needed singular verbs like has, is, knows, etc. A word of caution here. Sometimes these indefinite pronouns are followed by prepositional phrases that modify them and come in between the pronoun and the verb. That does not change the fact that the indefinite pronoun is the subject. So if it is singular, it must agree with a singular verb. Just cross out the prepositional phrase mentally and the subject gets revealed. So for example, each of these fruits is juicy. Each of the plants in this nursery is of an excellent breed. Everyone in the office is invited for the party. Neither of these choices appears to be satisfactory. One of our managers is preparing the budget. One more exception. If a parenthetical each follows a plural noun or pronoun, the verb should be plural. Examples are The members each feel their responsibility. They each have their own problems. Ten each of these books are required. A second set of indefinite pronouns is always plural. These are both, few, fewer, many, other, others and several. These pronouns agree with the plural verb. Some example sentences are The woman has two daughters. Both are very beautiful. Many have responded to the invitation for this weekend's party. A few are not coming at all. Several indicate that they might be late. As you would have noticed, we selected plural verbs such as are, have, indicate for these pronouns. The third and the last set of indefinite pronouns could be singular or plural depending on what they refer to. These are all, none, any, some, more and most. Some examples of their use are, none of the food is fresh. None refers to food which is uncountable and singular. So we use the verb is. But for the same indefinite pronoun none, we would say, None of the cookies are left. None refers to cookies, which is a plural noun. Some of the furniture seems out of fashion. Some refers to furniture, which is uncountable and singular. So we use the singular verb seems. But we would say, beware, some of the rocks are slippery. Some refers to rocks here, which is a plural noun. So it agrees with the plural verb. Similarly, all of the typing has been finished. All refers to typing which is uncountable and singular. And most of the goods have been sold. Most refers to the word goods which is clearly plural. Now, the phrase one of with all its variants poses special problems for students. So here are three rules which will help you attempt the questions on this area. The phrase is one of and one of the take a singular verb. This is according to what we discussed earlier that some indefinite pronouns like one are always singular. The correct answers for the first two sentences are one of you is telling the truth and one of our managers is preparing the project presentation. The second rule is 
the phrase is one of those who and one of the things that take plural verbs again we have done the section on relative clauses that come in between words like that who and which introducing these relative clauses are relative pronouns try and see what these pronouns are referring to accordingly the subject will be singular or plural one of the things that dash students nuts is subject verb agreement we need to decide the verb for the relative clause that dash students nuts the relative pronoun that refers to things that drive student nuts the subject is plural so the verb in this clause must be plural too garv is one of those students who dash brought laurels to our institute the relative clause here is who dash brought laurels to our institute who in this clause refers to students who have brought laurels to our institute the subject is plural so the verb in this clause must be plural too on the other hand if the words the only precedes these one of phrases they take a singular verb for example vishal is the only one of our students who dash received the scholarship the pronoun in the relative clause who refers to vishal as the only student who has received the scholarship so the correct sentence is vishal is the only one of our students who has received the scholarship the eighth and last area in subject verb agreement is special subjects now the subjects don't always refer to persons things or animals sometimes they refer to titles of works such as books magazines movies etc to company names and to gerund phrases the subject in these cases is singular the name of a country or its government as subject is also considered singular some example sentences following this rule are the expendables is a movie about a group of aged mercenaries with a mission the expendable sounds plural the word is the title of a movie and is singular the times of india still has wide circulation times of india is the name of a newspaper and hence singular The Coca-Cola company is headquartered in Atlanta, Georgia. Coca-Cola company is clearly a company name and hence singular. The United States of America has a congressional system. United States of America is a country name, though it sounds plural, but it is considered singular. And sleeping is my favorite pastime. Sleeping is a gerund; it's singular. Another special case is that of amounts. Nouns that express amounts of time, money, distance, etc., are considered singular. For example, twenty minutes of exercise every day keeps a person fit. The subject phrase twenty minutes measures time and is singular. Similarly, we would say three years seems too long a time to wait. The subject phrase three years measures time and is singular. Yes, five meters is ample for a suit. The subject phrase five meters measures length and is singular. And eight hundred dollars is more than I can afford. The subject phrase eight hundred dollars is mentioned as a single amount of money and is singular. Please note that the word dollars is a special case. When talking about an amount of money, it requires a singular verb, but when referring to the dollars themselves, a plural verb is required. So we say a hundred dollars is a lot of money, but dollars are often used instead of rubles in Russia. In the last sentence, dollars are being considered as individual units, so the word agrees with a plural verb. The third and last case is that of fractional expressions such as a majority of, one half of, two fifths of, forty percent of. For fractions, percentages, and other parts of a whole as subjects, 
the verb agrees with the object of the preposition that follows the subject for example one third of the voters have cast their ballots so far while the fractional expression one third is the subject it refers to voters which is the object of the preposition of the verb must agree with voters which is both countable and plural so have is the correct verb half of the grain was ruined due to untimely rains the fractional expression half is the subject and since it refers to grain which is the object of the preposition of the verb must agree with grain which is an uncountable and singular noun so was is the correct verb coming to percentages we would say 40% of the newspaper is devoted to advertisements newspaper is singular so verb must be singular 80% of the buildings were destroyed in the inferno buildings are plural so verb must be plural a majority of the student body is in favor of relaxed attendance norms the expression a majority of is unspecified in terms of percentage and it refers to the student body a noun phrase which is singular so the verb must be singular too we find another problem when we need to write phrases like a number of or the number of and while they are similar in nature one of them needs a singular verb and the other a plural verb the number of requires a singular verb and a number of requires a plural verb examples are the number of mistakes in this report is alarming the number of patients suffering from dengue and malaria increases every year both the sentences above required singular verbs but a number of errors were identified in the report a number of our staff are going on leave the subjects above require plural verbs finally sums and products of mathematical processes are expressed as singular and require singular verbs the expression more than one oddly enough takes a singular verb more than one student has failed this time 2 and 2 is 4 5 times 4 divided by 2 is 10 as we discussed all of them required singular verbs so that completes our topic we have tried to cover it as comprehensively as possible but if you have a doubt on any question on subject verb agreement feel free to drop a comment on the video page you can even mail us your comments and feedback or any queries at ettispeak@gmail.com hope you like the lesson subscribe our channel and stay tuned for more such videos thank you